Hi everyone, I am so thrilled to be back and just to say that I am a registered nurse. After 75 questions, 31 select all that apply, a lot of self-doubt, but a lot of counteracting with positive affirmation, I am a nurse. I'm a nurse. And I'm gonna tell you all about my NCLEX experience today, my mindset going into it, what I used to study. I only use two resources, so I hope what I have to share with you today will be helpful. Thank you guys for following me on this journey and getting to this point with me. I thank you. This video is not only for me, but for you. So let's get this video started. Hi everyone. For those of you that do not know me, I'm Danielle Denise. I am now a licensed registered nurse. Um, I'm an entry level master's of science in nursing student. I have been documenting my journey thus far to get to where I am right now. My ultimate goal is to become a psychiatric and mental health nurse practitioner. Um, I took a little hiatus to study and prep for the NCLEX and now I am back with all of my to knows about the NCLEX, what I wish I would have known, what I think you should know, um, how to frame your mindset for this exam, what I used to study. I tried to film this before and tried to film videos during the process, but I was truly on the hot mess express. But I'm glad that I can sit down right now and film a cumulative video of everything that I feel is important about that NCLEX experience and why you shouldn't be afraid, worried, or intimidated by this exam. Whether it's your first time or your bajillionth time, I don't care how many times you took it, you're gonna be okay. I'm here to help and I'm here to share my experience. Also, if you are new, feel free at the end of this video, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, go ahead and subscribe. I have so much more content to come. This video will primarily be my NCLEX journey video and the update on that. I do need to come in with the full life update video because a lot has transpired, I guess, um, as far as a new job, uh, bought a new car, um, and I'm thinking about moving out the country. I don't know, it's a little stuff. So that video will be for another time. This is strictly NCLEX stuff. So let's just get into it. If there's any parts that you're like itching to see, I will leave a timestamp box in the description box or you can scroll at the bottom of this video and you will see timestamp markers for each chapter that I will be discussing today. So thank you for visiting my channel and I'm gonna get this video started. So to start what I want to do is go in like a chronological order of when I got my ATT to when I took my test and how I felt after. So coming out of school I finished my exit exam March 1st, and this is the first thing I wish I would have done. I wish I would have kept up that momentum of studying then so that by the time I got my ATT, I would have just been ready to just take the test and be done. But everything worked out according to perfect timing and exactly how it was meant to be, so I'm not sweating that now. But that's what I wish would have happened. I finished school and took my exit exam March 1st, but because the BRN was backed up, I didn't get my ATT until April 9th. That was a long gap as it was, but had I taken another month or that month to study, I would have just taken it at the beginning of April, but it worked out perfectly. I'm a nurse now. I'm a nurse when I was meant to be a nurse. Thank you, Lord. But in the midst of waiting for my ATT, I went ahead and purchased UWorld and started studying lightly. Like I took a break, I was just doing what I wanted to do um, and didn't really start making my schedule until April 1st. And this was, again, before I even found out I got my ATT. So my study schedule started April 1st. I broke down every category in UWorld um, based on, how did I do it? I didn't do, systems like adult health, GI, um, cardio, stuff like that. I just did fundamentals, adult health, critical care, maternity, peds, mental health, leadership, and then farm. Those last few ones I think I mixed up depending on how I did on my last assessment. I think I flipped leadership and farm and I did farm later and did leadership first. 
So that's the only difference, just off the top of my head. But I started with the fundamentals questions and at the end of that week, like I said, I started studying for real April 1st. At the end of the week, April 9th, that's when I got my ATT. During this time, I also decided to go visit a friend and somehow it still worked out that I was still able to study while I was gone. I mean, not as intensively as when I was just home and day in, day out just studying, but that is how that worked out. But once I came back, oh, it was game time. Like, this is when I was trying to film the videos that I promised saying like, I'll film study with me's and things like that. But what happened was I was just an anxious ball of nerves. Like I'd wake up at like 7 a.m. and I'd study throughout the day. I'd dilly dally here and there. And then next thing you know, I'm up to like 11, still studying, but like no real structure. So that's how that went in the beginning. And also with that study plan in the beginning, I started April 1st, didn't get my ATT till April 9th. By the time I found out that I got my ATT or authorization to test, I looked at the dates that were available and I was trying to be mindful of where I wanted to take my test. I was willing to go anywhere, but I was also trying to be realistic and see what they had available since they were so backed up. In my mind, the date that I wanted was May 28th. Probably when this video goes up, May 28th hasn't even hit yet. But then on the same token, I'll get into this reason later, but I wanted to take my test at a specific place and what was available was May 21st. So I adjusted my six to eight week schedule plan to fit the idea that I would be taking my test at the end of May, either the 21st or the 28th, the 21st now that that date is there and available. And should I feel more prepared later on, I can change that date. There's no problem with changing, changing your date until you're like the day before they don't let you change your date. So yeah, my date was set May 21st. I started studying April 1st loosely. Once I came back from my trip on like the 15th of April, I started studying for real. From then until May 20, no, 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 no. May 18th. 17th or 18th, the beginning of the same week that I was supposed to test. I was studying hardcore. Like, no matter how I tried to film, my anxiety would not let me because my brain was always running at a mile a minute. It was always like, you don't have time to do what brings you joy. Like, you should be studying. And that was not healthy. Like, don't do that. Don't recommend it. Mm -mm. For your sake of well being, be organized, have a good time set. If I wasn't studying with my study partner, I was not in a good time set or schedule. Like, I was all over the place. Another thing I want to add about the schedule that I initially had for myself it was too much. And that's as simple as I can put it. It was way too much. I said I was gonna do 75 questions a day. I was also going to be listening to my Mark Clemick lectures. I was going to be reading um, corresp corresponding chapters in Saunders for the questions or yeah, the question sections that I was doing at the time. And I think I said I was going to watch YouTube videos, so Simple Nursing, Registered Nurse RN, all in like these same days. Where was the time? Where did I think I had the time? Because initially it was just supposed to be from like 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. just studying. Where, who was supposed to watch all those videos? Like, what was I thinking? Writing out that schedule. Did I do all that? No. No. I ended up only using Mark Clemick and New World like I had originally intended. Because I don't know what kind of superwoman stuff I thought I was on, but that schedule that I had in mind, not realistic. Like... Pick one good source and one good reviewer and you're good to go. Something I wanna interject and say right here is that in these YouTube comments, there are bots that come on and they say the same things over and over again, trying to scam students to pay $1,000 to buy something from some reviewer. I will leave screenshots right here of some of the similar things that they say. I was gonna make a video about this and I still might, but I am over them trying to scam students and scam people. So just know right now, you don't need this. Mark Klemek, somebody ups, uploads his videos onto YouTube every few months for free. If not, you can Google them and you can find the, the links to the recordings. 
You do not need to be paying some random internet person, some random bot, $700 to $1,000 when you can take Mark's class for real for $300 and buy UWorld for like $100 to $200. Some programs cost more and still pay less than what these bots are trying to scam people to do. That upsets me. And I have tried to block a lot of them, but somehow they keep coming back. They keep coming back. But just know, you heard it here first, live and in person. I'm a real person. The bots gotta go. Don't trust them. I usually delete their comments. I don't care about the engagement. It's fake. So bye. Anyways, back to the resources I used. Starting out studying, just you world and Mark Clinic. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't use too many resources. Transitioning from Kaplan to you world was kind of hard because Kaplan, I felt was... I don't know, probably as vague as the NCLEX was and not very helpful when it came to remediation and giving you description that, descriptions as to why the answer is the correct answer. Whereas you world, they were very detailed with the questions. They prompted you to think critically and gave you remediation tools that were helpful and detailed and in depth. You have probably watched a ton of videos by, by now about using UWorld or using Kaplan, but this is my personal experience and my best description or explanation of how different Kaplan was to UWorld. Kaplan I received through school, that's what we used. We took periodic tests, that's what we used for my exit exam, and that's what I used to study for that. And that's why I said I wish I would have kept up that momentum because I was going hard with Kaplan. Like I finally found the niche or what I needed to be successful using Kaplan towards the end once I took my exit exam and then I took that break and then transitioned into figuring out how to answer you world questions and it was like a different world but once I got the hang of it I found it to be more valuable using you world um yeah so that's really all you need just pick a good Q bank whatever you feel works for you um that's what I recommend and then I went into um Mark Clemick's lecture. I was listening to him as I was studying for my exit exam. So some of his lectures were already familiar to me and listening to them again this time was refreshing. And I listened to his prioritization and delegation lecture so many times and it really helped me with figuring out how to make educated guesses when I felt like I didn't know an answer. So if you don't listen to any of his other lectures, I definitely would say choose that one. But he share so many tips in between in all the other lectures like it would be worth it to listen to all of them if you can going more into depth with you world um and my scores on you world definitely when people tell you not to focus so much on your scores and just focus on the descriptions or remediation that they give you i feel like there's another word for that that people use but the answers as the things at the bottom of the question when they tell you like this is why that answer is what it is if you just pay attention to that you should be pretty good you world to me was pretty intimidating starting out because i was scoring so low so when people were saying like don't pay attention to your score just focus on the remediation you'll be fine i didn't believe them because i'm like this is really hurting my heart right now like i felt like i learned nothing in school like i didn't understand anything like i was i was starting off behind and that was not a good feeling, but turns out I was just fine. <laughs> um, I was doing okay. And like you've probably heard before in other videos, and as you've seen on UWorld's website, if you score on an average of about 56 to 57%, and they clarified this in another video, and get like a high chance, a very high chance of passing on their assessment, you're most likely going to pass the NCLEX with like a 90 something percentile uh, percent chance. So you should be fine. And that was true because I got those exact numbers and stats and I passed 75 questions as you guys know now. So yeah, my scores were freaking me out. I was scoring anywhere from the 40% to 80% and that's just with questions that were unused. Going over my incorrect questions, I was doing better as I should have because did you learn anything? Um, but without that it was it was a pretty big range like i had my strong areas and i had my weak areas but i really read through those remediations and 
something else that also helped is my friend she typed most of them out and she's really good at typing me I did fundamentals and it took me days and days and days like had I really typed out all of the remediations that you wrote gives you and like handwritten them like how I was doing I wouldn't have taken the NCLEX till 2022 like I was I was moving too slow so luckily I had her notes and I was able to read through those like without using the QBank or just to have a physical copy of something so that was great as well my assessment scores um my U world assessment scores the first one I got borderline and I almost had a borderline panic attack like I was like uh oh I didn't learn a, a dang thing in school like I didn't learn anything from U world yet like I I don't know and it didn't matter to me that people on the forums and blogs and in real life were saying I got borderline and I did fine I'm like I got borderline and I'm in a heap of trouble so what are we gonna do about it so I ended up going on NCLEX mastery and I took their free like assessment and it scared me because for a minute it said 0% chance of passing but then it loaded and it said 91% chance of passing and I was like okay get your head back in the game get back in there keep going at the time I was only halfway through the Q bank anyway so I for sure needed to keep going and I'm glad I did because the next time I took it about a week and a half to two weeks later and I got very high chance of passing and that was like about three days before my NCLEX and I was relieved so at that time I had finished my um, entire Q bank all 2192 or 182 questions down to zero started doing the incorrects and then I took that last assessment got a very high chance of passing and I was so relieved so those last three days I was kind of just passively going over notes studying watching videos listening to Mark Clemick again and just trying to get my head in the game that's really all that was happening those last few days. So now I wanna talk about going into the exam and kind of like framing my mindset to take the exam. Something that I touched on briefly was choosing my date and choosing where I wanted to take my exam. So a big part in framing my mindset to go into this exam was knowing where I was gonna take my test. Um, I chose a Pearson Center that I had been to before to take my registered behavior tech um, exam. And since I had a good experience with that, you know, passing that on the first try and having that feeling of I've been here before and I had a good experience here, I passed an exam here, it was a comfort thing. Also taking UWorld and knowing that the UWorld format is close to the NCLEX format, that was also another comfort thing. So those were two things that lessened my anxiety. And going in, I was able to focus on other things like, mm, how do I feel? Do I feel like I know this content? Do I feel ready? Just stuff like that. And trying to lessen my anxiety from just unfamiliar environment, unfamiliar exam from unfamiliarity to being confident and feeling like I've done this before, I can do this, I'm already a nurse. I'm just here to take this exam and show them that I'm a nurse. Like, is the NCLEX ready for me? That's where my head was going into that test. I'm not gonna lie and say that there wasn't self-doubt. Going into it, I was wondering like, did I do enough to study? Yes, I got a high chance of passing the second time, but did I really do enough? Was that enough? Did I really put the work in? I don't know. I mean, I just did 2,000 questions. I read every single paragraph or body of work that UWorld had to offer me. I listened to every Mark Clemick lecture. I watched so many videos throughout school. I took so many exams throughout school, like, but I was still having that doubt, like, am I really ready? I was, I was. I had to counteract that with a lot of positive affirmations and telling myself, you can do this, you got this, you're a nurse, you already got a job, so figure it out. <laughs> um, but just counteracting the negative thoughts with overwhelmingly positive thoughts, no matter what I was thinking or feeling, just to challenge those thoughts and tell them, no, I'm fine, I got this, I can do this, I'm gonna be okay, and a lot of prayer. Um, Personally, I'm a believer and I felt calmness and peace going into it, praying and also meditating and taking deep breaths and breathing exercises and just calming myself going into it because 
it's one thing to not know your stuff and to not have put in the work to prepare for this exam, but then to let that anxiety get the best of you after all the work that you've done, you can't go out like that. Like, no, you work too hard. You work way too hard. So going into the exam center or the testing center, it was a familiar place. Everything looked the same as when I took my RBT exam and I just felt a sense of familiarity. And I went in there, I took my deep breaths, I sat down. Well, before that, I was a hot mess because they, with COVID protocol, they make you wash your hands before you go, girl, the key was stuck in the bathroom door. I was trying to grab and hold on to stuff and, and, and girl, dropping stuff, everything, a mess. But I got back in there and I grounded myself and I took that exam and I remembered Mark saying, Mark Clemick to be exact, saying, those first 10 questions, everybody should know. You should know it. Like, don't second guess yourself. Another thing he tells you is if you're gonna second guess yourself and decide to choose something else, you have to come up with a really great reason as to why that other answer is so much better than your gut answer. Like, don't stray away from your gut. So those first few, I was like, thinking about Mark Clement. <laughs> like, what did he tell me? Don't doubt yourself. Like, there's a reason why you're thinking this answer is the right answer. Stick with it. Chill out. You'll be fine. Um, and then I think I got to question four and I got my first SATA or select all that apply. And I was like, all right. And I remember at this one YouTuber saying that she used like little tick marks to count how many she got. I started doing that. Next thing I knew I was at like question 70 and I was like, time just like flew by. Um, it took like two hours and I was at question 70 and it just kind of hit me. I'm like, I feel like these are my last few questions. Like, I just feel like that's it. Because I was getting like two to three SATA, two to three regular questions. I got one med math question and that was it. The rest SATA and regular, like single choice questions. I got to question 70 and I was like, this could be the last few. So I was like, I'm not looking back up in that corner. I don't care, um, I'm not looking at it. Kept going. The last question I got, I looked, I was on a select all that apply question and I was at number 75. And I was like, if this, if these little two choices that I have right here aren't good, let this computer adaptive test give me a few more chances. Like, don't let me go out like this. I clicked um, next or submit and it said, thank you for taking your NCLEX exam. Would you like to take these survey questions? And I'm like, mm, that was it? I did that <laughs> like okay okay like during that time I didn't feel that doubt like okay you can you can also fail in 75 questions 75 is the minimum you know I was just like okay okay they wouldn't have done me like that with all those SATA if it wasn't if I wasn't doing good hopefully I mean it's a myth but that's what I was thinking because once I finished the only two things I had on my little whiteboard were some calculations from that med math question and 31 tick marks for how many select all that apply questions that I got. And that was it. And I was like, okay, okay, that's it. <laughs> Hands off. But I did do the survey questions and let me tell you, if they choose to turn the NCLEX into what those survey question was, I would not be sitting right here. Uh-uh, my brain was like, what are all these words? Why are there so many paragraphs? I saw just a couple of symptoms and I was like, gotta be epiglottitis. I was just clicking. I was like, I'm glad this isn't a part of it because I would not have RN behind my name right now if that was the NCLEX. My, my study partner was like, she loved it. She thought it was fun. I feel like it would be fun if they only gave you five of those and that was the end of the test because it's fun if you start off with a clear mind, not fun after you've answered 75 questions almost half of them being select all that apply and your brain is just like, stop doing this to me. <laughs> um, so yeah. One last thing I wanna add that Mark um, said that stuck with me is that when choosing your answers for select all that apply questions, don't try to over select because you think the NCLEX is trying to trick you and that they threw something in there just for funsies and that you missed out on something. He said, never choose more than what you know. Like don't just go all, willy-nilly just picking answers just because you feel like it should be that one too but you don't know for sure you're safer choosing what you do know rather than guessing like oh it should be that one too so don't do that 
don't do that. I, I honestly did better on you world questions once I started doing that instead of just choosing more than what was actually true. Also, I did, I feel like, cause I don't know if it was true. Um, I had one side of that really was like, it could be one or it could be all where it was just one because they made it really clear that the other four choices or four or five choices, it just did make sense for those to be true in relation to the question that they gave me. So you'll be fine. But Sada, once you master them on UWorld, the NCLEX should be worried about you. The NCLEX should be wondering if it's a good enough test for you. That's what, that's what the NCLEX needs to be worried about is if it can handle you. Lastly, I just wanna talk about coming out of that exam. I walked out of there feeling like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Like I just felt so relieved and I was like, I can't believe I just did that. And I can't believe I just did that in 75. Like me, me, <laughs> like, I don't know where that self doubt was coming from, but then the real self doubt came in and the intrusive thoughts were like, nah, you didn't pass. Mm -mm. So I was like, I ain't got time for this. I was like, let me call my mom. Let me tell her how I did. Um, my dad also called me. Like he just knew I was done. I didn't, I didn't even get the chance to call him first. Um, but I was telling them like, I wanted to do the Pearson view trick. My mom was like, no, my brain was like, yes. <laughs> so when I went home, I did it. And when I had put in my card information, it said like, oh, this card is expired. So I thought that was the bad pop up, honey, I started shaking, like trembling. I'm like, why would, why wouldn't they give me another chance to do better? Why would they give me all those select all that apply? And I was like tripping, but really the card was just expired. I didn't even get to the part where you actually do the trick. So I used a more like up to date card and I got to, this is what people miss out on. And they think that they got the good pop up without going all the way through. You're supposed to click or process the card payment with something just a little off about your card info, like either the CVC code or CVV code or your expiration date, change one of those so that it doesn't actually charge you if you didn't pass. But you put all that in, you click submit, it'll take you to another page saying, this is what you're gonna pay. And then you click submit again. And then it takes you to the page that says, our records show that you have recently scheduled another test. Another test can't be scheduled at, at this time. So that's the pop-up that I got. And after seeing that once, that wasn't enough for me. I said, what if Pearson changes their mind? So I was checking every hour on the hour, just like a natural rhythm of me checking my phone, checking the BRN's website to look up the license verification for the next 37 hours. Yep, I was hoping that the quick results would either come in earlier or um, that the Pearson view trick would just remain the same and that my license would show up. And at 3 a.m. on, was that Saturday night? Cause I went out on Friday to try to like clear, clear thine head. 3 a.m. that night, I checked that BRN. That license was there. That license was there. I was so relieved. I was so thrilled. I mean, yes, I'm sitting here looking at these degrees like, ooh, and still in the master's portion, but like to see that I'm really a registered nurse and where I've started working, I adore, at least for now, <laughs> I hope it's forever. Um, it's just such a good feeling. Everything feels so surreal. Like it's been really weird lately and just with everything that has gone on, I'll talk about it more in my life update video, but I am so grateful to be where I am now. And it is an honor to be a nurse. It's a very big responsibility. And I'm just happy to serve others in this role. And I'm so proud of who I am today and how far I've come and the person that I am and the nurse that I'm going to be and, or that I am now. <laughs> um, it's really exciting and I'm so thrilled just to be here. And yeah, so. That's my NCLEX journey. It's probably such a long video, but it's meaningful. It means a lot. And it means a lot that you guys have been here supporting me this entire time. So I thank you. And I can't wait to share so much more with you guys about my nursing journey and on this journey and where I choose to go next and what I do next and all of that. I truly thank you for your support and being here on my channel. So thank you so much. This wasn't just for me. It's for us and 
yeah i appreciate you all in all i hope this helps um i will see you guys in my life update video and the videos that i have to come it's pretty exciting things going on i will also tell you guys all about the new grad nursing interview experience all about yeah the new job new cars moving out the country all of that um so thank you for watching and supporting and everything else subscribe like the video all of that i don't know just a million emotions in one sitting um is there anything that i left out i hope not oh if you have any questions just leave them in the comment section i will see you guys in my next upload bye